Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to look at multiplying polynomials. Now, as we're looking at the first part of multiplying some polynomials together, the first thing we're going to look at is multiplying a monomial and a polynomial together. So here we have 2x cubed times x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now what we're going to do here, when you're multiplying a monomial and a polynomial together, what we're going to do is use the distributive property. So we're going to be taking this 2x cubed and multiplying it into this set of parentheses and multiplying everything inside of the parentheses by that 2x cubed. Now one thing that we're going to have to remember is our product property for exponents. And remember what the product property says is if you're multiplying two of the same variable together, what you want to do is add those exponents together. So let's start doing this multiplication. I'm going to distribute in this 2x cubed. So I'm first going to multiply it by the x cubed. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to multiply the coefficients, so the numbers in front of the variables. So on the outside I've got this 2, but on the inside I've got this 1x cubed. So 2 times 1 is 2. Now when I take x cubed times x cubed, using my product property, I'm supposed to add those exponents together. So that's going to give me x to the sixth. So taking that 2x cubed times 1x cubed, I get 2x to the sixth. Now I want to distribute the 2x cubed to the 3x squared. So 2 times 3 is 6. x cubed times x squared, I want to add those exponents together. So I get x to the fifth. Then if I take the 2x cubed and multiply it over to the negative 2x, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then x cubed times x to the first power, I get x to the fourth power. And then lastly, I need to take that 2x cubed and multiply it to the 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. And this 5 doesn't have any x's on it, so I don't have any extra powers to add to that x cubed. So it's just going to stay as an x cubed. So when we distribute in that 2x cubed for our final answer, we get 2x to the sixth plus 6x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth plus 10x cubed. Taking a look at this example, I'm supposed to multiply 3x squared times 2x cubed minus x squared plus 4x minus 3. Again, we're going to use our distributive property and that product property for exponents. So I'm going to take the 3x squared times the 2x cubed. So I do 3 times 2, which is 6. Then I take x squared times x cubed, and I'm supposed to add those exponents together. So I get x to the fifth. Then I take the 3x squared and multiply it to the negative x squared. Now there's really a negative 1 in front of here. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. x squared times x squared. If I add those exponents together, I get x to the fourth. Then I take my 3x squared times this plus 4x. 3 times 4 is going to give me 12. x squared times x to the first power is going to give me x cubed. And then lastly, I need to take my 3x squared and multiply it to this negative 3 on the end. So 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And I don't have any extra x's to add to this x squared. So it just stays as an x squared. So we get 6x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth, plus 12x cubed, minus 9x squared. Taking a look at this example, we've got negative 5x cubed times 4x to the fifth, minus 2x cubed, plus x minus 12. Again, I'm going to use my distributive property. So I'm going to take the negative 5x cubed and multiply it to the 4x to the fifth. So negative 5 times 4 is negative 20 x cubed times x to the fifth. If I add those exponents together, I get x to the eighth. Then if I take the negative 5x cubed times the negative 2x cubed, negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. And then x cubed times x cubed, I want to add those exponents together. So I get x to the sixth. Then if I take the negative 5x cubed times the plus x, well, it's really x to the first power. There's also a 1 in front of this x. So negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. x cubed times x to the first is x to the fourth when I add those exponents together. And then I take my negative 5x cubed and multiply it all the way over to the negative 12. Negative 5 times negative 12 is positive 60. 
and there's no extra x's on the end to add to this x cubed, so it stays as an x cubed. Here we've got 5x times 3x to the 4th minus 2x to the 5th minus 4. I'm going to do my distributive property. So 5x times 3x to the 4th. 5 times 3 is 15. Now this x technically has a first power on it, so x to the 1st times x to the 4th gives me x to the 5th. Then if I take my 5x times this negative 2x to the 5th, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. x to the 1st times x to the 5th. I add those exponents together, so I get x to the sixth. And then I take the 5x times the negative 4. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. And now this 4 doesn't have any extra x's on it, so that's just going to stay as negative 20x. Now one thing I notice about this, when we're writing out our polynomials, we always want to write them out in power descending order, going from highest power to lowest power. So I notice in the middle here we've got this x to the sixth, but in the front we have that x to the fifth. So it's not quite in power descending order right now. So I'm going to rearrange things. So I'm going to take this negative 10x to the 6th, and I'm going to pull that to the front because it's got the highest power. This 15x to the 5th is the next highest power. It's a positive 15, so I'm going to go plus 15x to the 5th. And then our lowest power in here is this negative 20x. So this is going to be our final answer here putting that polynomial in power descending order. Now sometimes as we're looking at doing things with polynomials, they don't always have the exact same variable in there. So here we've got 4x and we're multiplying that by 2x to the fourth minus 5y. So I notice that we have an x variable and a y variable in there. Well, when I do my distributive property, if I go 4x times 2x to the fourth, that's gonna be just like we've been doing. Four times two is gonna be eight. And then if I take this x times this x to the fourth, I add those exponents together, so I get x to the fifth. Now when I take this 4x and multiply it over to the negative 5y, things are going to be just a little bit different because we've got two different variables in there. I'm still going to take the 4 times the negative 5 to get negative 20, but now I can't really take x times y because those are different variables. So I'm just going to write it as negative 20xy. And having all of those written right next to each other, there's no operational symbols between them, so that means that we're multiplying them together. So this really says negative 20 times x times y. So this is going to be our final answer in here. Like I said, we can't put the x and the y together because those are two separate variables. So taking a look at this example, we've got 9v squared, and we're going to multiply that by u squared plus uv minus 5v squared. So if I try to take 9v squared and multiply it by u squared, those are two different variables, so I can't actually put them together. So I'm going to leave it as 9v squared u squared. Then if I try to take the 9 times the plus uv, well, in front of this uv, there's technically a 1, so 9 times 1 is 9. Now, in this term, we do have a v in there. So we're going to be able to add this v squared to this v to the first power that's already in there. So v squared times v to the first gives us v cubed, but we don't have any extra u variables to add to this u. So that's going to stay as a plain u. Then if I take the 9v squared and multiply by the negative 5v squared, well, 9 times negative 5 is negative 45. Now here, these are both v variables, so we're going to be able to add those exponents together. So that's going to be v to the fourth. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.